So there is a lot of confusion about what spiritual Aikido is or if Aikido can be spiritual. As most of you know, the founder of Aikido, Morihiro Shiba, he would often say, he would use the spirituality word a lot. He would, he would emphasize spirituality in Aikido. But in today's world, uh, it seems the spirituality part of Aikido is in a big confusion, in a big hassle. That question was always present in me. It was always important for me because when I started Aikido, I actually started because I was interested in spirituality. But one of the problems with spirituality is that when somebody says, I'm spiritual, or is this spiritual, or Aikido is spiritual, uh, oftentimes we're not really defining what spiritual is. And spirituality is a, is a vast topic. There can be many interpretations of what spirituality is. Somebody can imagine spirituality to be about chi, ki, chakras, etc. And uh, the other person can, can see spirituality as a practice of self-purification. Both people will speak and argue about spirituality without actually realizing that one is talking about apples and the other one is talking about oranges. So that's actually where people trip very often or too often. Before we continue to, to talk about what is spirituality, I would like to define that spirituality for me, I try to make it as simple as possible. And for me, spirituality means understanding that you're a part of the bigger whole, that you are, the world is not about you, that uh, life is bigger than each individual, and in a sense, we are all in this together, that individuals and life is as a one communal thing and it's important for us to work for the betterment of uh, the whole to understand that my preferences my personal needs are not as important as the needs of everyone for me that's actually spirituality you can talk about it in other words you can talk about it in different ways but we can stop actually here and if you look at osensei he might have used other words for it but you can see that he was very passionate about reconciling the world making the whole family, the whole world, one family. So it seems that uh, it's quite clear actually that spirituality for him had similar meanings. The problem is that what I heard, the stories I heard, and there's one book which I really like, Remembering Osensei, where different people, both Westerners and Japanese, tell short stories about Osensei. And also I heard the few stories from Shihan Robert Nado, who was a friend and a student of Osensei back when he was alive. Uh, that his students, most of his students weren't actually interested in the, into the spiritual part of Aikido and that was for a few different reasons. One of the reasons was because um, when Aikido was at its peak, it was after the Second World War, the Japanese, since they lost, uh, they were very patriotic, so they really wanted to, to win back the honor of Japan. And so when they seeked out Osensei as this great... Uh, well-known martial arts teacher, they wouldn't be interested in his spirituality, they would be interested in his uh, martial arts skills. And so when he would speak about spirituality, uh, there's this one story from Shihan Robert Nado, which, which uh, made a big impact on me. Osensei, he would oftentimes start to talk and talk and talk and share these uh, long stories about spirituality. When he would start talking, oftentimes he would talk for the whole class, and the class wouldn't even happen. So there, are these, there were these doors, and there were one or two senior students next, next to these doors. They saw somebody coming in late, uh, walking into the dojo, and Osensei was talking. She and Robert Nodo, the way I remember the story, he told the senior student, and make a point here, senior student, he saw somebody coming and she said, no, no, don't come here, the old guy's talking. Today there's not gonna be any class. Senior student. So that kind of gives the sense of what was happening. And you could, you could think that this was maybe that one person who was not really into what Osensei was saying, but at the same time, when I was reading uh, the history, the bi biography of Osensei and, and the remembering Osensei, there was a story when uh, Osensei was walking with a bunch of his students, and he said, you know, I see people walking behind me, but when I turn back, I realize there's no one. And that student who was telling the story, he said he didn't understand what he means back then, but then later it occurred to him that Osensei just didn't feel that anyone is with him into that spiritual path. He did have friends, he did have uh, Goi Sensei, which is another whole, whole long story, but, uh, but it doesn't seem his students were passionate about spirituality back then. There's a couple more things why that happened. One more is because his students were young. For young people it's very common to, for the whole world to be about you or about uh, some concept rather than the whole. And, uh, another point is that Osensei was 
very much into mystical terms. And most, most of you know that from He was very much talking about how uh, spirituality is connected to Izayami, Zanagi, Amino Murakumo Kukisamaru, this heavenly dragon, and these deities, and this, he used a lot of mythological terms. And even today, reading most of his uh, texts, it's sometimes hard to catch what he was talking about, and that made for the students even harder to catch his spirituality. Although, nevertheless, uh, like in the book The Heart of Aikido, which I really love as well, the, the stories he says, or the ideas, are very precise, very pure, so it was not all that bad. But then, uh, as the students of Asensi grew, uh, not everyone was interested in spirituality, and some became interested in spirituality, but in different ways. And most of, in most of the cases, it's just not very clear where the spirituality is with Aikido, even more so when it's becoming so vast and actually disconnected, as uh, we spoke a bit in the past video. So when we look at spirituality and Aikido today, we have this background, which is already um, quite vague and quite complicated. But today, again, spirituality is oftentimes the word... To many, too many people think uh, connected to esoteric, so cheeky chakras, etc. But the problem is that such spirituality is oftentimes it's exclusive. You have to believe it, and if you don't, you're not in the club. And which is actually, in my terms of spirituality, it's not actually, it just doesn't work. It's not considering the whole. It's more about me becoming more spiritual, becoming more cool in spirituality and then I'm higher than you, you are nothing, which is just not spiritual at all. It makes me mad actually. And that happens in Aikido too, as we spoke in the previous video about uh, judging others and comparing each other and saying I'm better than you. Again, pfft, kicking out the spiritual side. And then again, when you look at the Aikido, most of the dojos are just teaching technique and sometimes they say a quote or two about from a sensei, but then you get confused and you say like, okay, so where is the spiritual part in that? And it's, I agree, it's hard to see it there. There are many legends, many, many myths. Uh, one of the myths is if you train long enough, eventually you will just get it, which is not true. And again, in Remembering with Sensei, there's a quote which I liked uh, too. I can't remember who said it, but he said, well, in the past, when we would look at Osensei doing these incredible things, being so inspired, we would think, okay, in 30, 40 years, we will also get there. We just need to do techniques, do techniques, do techniques, and we're going to get there. Uh, but then he says, 30, 40, 50 years passed that we are doing Aikido, and said, it didn't come. That spirituality didn't come by itself. And they started to realize, you know, this is uh, not self-sufficient. Uh, it doesn't come, it does not come by itself. And that's my experience too, until until I got exposed to, to Aikido teachings which are about the whole, integrated into the training, it didn't really click into me. And the more I trained with my first instructor, who was very much about combat, the more I had this resistance of understanding, like, I don't see where that spiritual side of Aikido is. I had to explore things on my own besides the training to get the spirituality there. Trust me, it is there. Even in, in a lot of dojos, some of the parts you can see. So the most common one is no competition, although, yes, there's Tomiki style and some other places where they try to implement tournaments, but most of the dojos... Mm -hmm. Most of the dojos, they don't have competition, which is actually good, and that's the reason I, Osensei did it. He said, competition separates us and makes us against, looking to the notion of the wholeness, equal spirituality, competition denies that, in a sense creating a non-competitive environment in Aikido where we are, where we don't need to compare each other, where we don't need to prove that I'm better than you, is already a part of spirituality, which is quite rare in most cases. Uh, most life cases don't have that aspect. Even in work you, can, you compete, even uh, with your friends you compete. And technically Aikido shouldn't have that aspect. Again, as in the previous video we spoke, unfortunately, heck, it oftentimes does. To oftentimes dojos compare, students compare, but but that notion is still in most dojos it's it's present. Also ukenage relationship. Uh, in a healthy dojo, which is again not always you find it, but in Aikido it is oftentimes emphasized that you should take care of your partner. That even if it's an attacker, the ideal of Aikido is actually to take care of the attacker. As I say, to not double dip. So if you immobilize him, to not 
punch him in the face three times just because he attacked you, but rather do only what is necessary. And in the training also, to take care of your partner, to make sure he doesn't get hurt, to make sure he feels good, and you both feel good while you train. Again, not all the dojos have that, but generally the tendency of Aikido is to encourage that, which is also uh, quite spiritual. I could continue on uh, expressing more ideas about how generally Aikido has a tendency to, to draw people towards uh, that kind of notion of spirituality. But uh, the last thought I'll share for today is that my concept of what I call on and off the mat, what you train on the mat, you bring back on to your life. If you always resist on the mat, if you always compete on the mat, if you always hurt others on the mat, that's what you're going to get and do off the mat. But if you go towards the healthy side of Aikido, if you take care of your partners, if you enjoy your training, if you support and help others in their growth, if you take care of people even who are against you and you try to resolve conflict without becoming aggressive, uh, if you're not competing with others on the mat, hopefully, which is, again, actually it's quite rare, but if you don't, which Aikido generally has, does give that, that space for it, if you don't do it, that's what you're going to get and bring back off the mat. Those are the qualities which you're going to start to live off the mat, meaning you will start to compete less with the other people. You will start to become less aggressive when there is a conflict. It's on and on and on. So, so in that sense, Aikido has that space, has a fairly unique space, which has the potential to be spiritual, even on the basic level, which can make you more spiritual, make you more concerned about the whole, make you more concerned about the well-being of not only you, but you as a part of the whole. There's also the next step, which is a very direct implication of spirituality into Aikido training, which I'm very passionate about, which I really love doing. My sensei, Patrick Cassidy, does it. The Shizol community does it, and I do it very passionately too. Connecting techniques with certain exercises which make you feel more part of the whole. But that's a whole other video, and we're going to talk about that later. If you're interested into that topic, subscribe, check the other videos while the next one comes out. But I hope that gives you at least a bit of an understanding, a bit of a sense of one way to interpret spirituality in Aikido. And actually at the same time, unfortunately you see how oftentimes in the world of Aikido, it's off that direction. Dojos competing with each other, trying to prove who's best, senseis not getting along, etc, etc. But there is hope, there is that space, there is that basic initial message that Osensi left us with to do something great and uh, I want to remind you that uh, we have that choice. We can seek uh, more spirituality in Aikido. We can seek an Aikido which is taking care of the whole. I understand you. I, I've been there too. Not all dojos will accept that. Not all dojos will offer you that space. But you are free to choose your dojo. You are free to choose your sensei. And the techniques you will learn, you will be able to bring to the other dojo. You might need to relearn some things, but you're going to be fine. Trust what is important for you. Trust why you started Aikido. Try to see how it can actually work on and off the mat. And try to see how you can implement Osensei's message into your life through training and off training. There's a lot more to be said here, but I'm going to stop here. Thank you very much for listening through the whole video. I'm happy that you stayed all the way. Again, this is Rokas, and we'll continue on with our talks further. If you have any thoughts, I'm very interested to hear them in the comments. I'll definitely respond. Let me know what you consider spirituality to be in Aikido. Also, maybe the downsides of spirituality and misunderstandings you see. So let me know anything you think and feel in the comments. Also subscribe, like the video, that helps share this message further. Share it with your friends. Uh, I think it's worth it. And yeah, I think looking at life and Aikido through this way, we can actually make a difference. So, we'll stop here. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to go to the gym.